Hi guys, we're going to do a quick video on drive shaft phasing and drive line vibration. The first thing I'll mention is you need to park your car on a level ground. So if you don't have a four poster hoist like us, you're going to have to do it on the floor at home. You can't do it on a two poster with the suspension on droop. Now naturally when you lift your vehicle, the rear pinion angle will change. So we need the angle to perfectly oppose, i.e. be parallel with the output shaft angle. So if you've got this at one degree off 90 down Downwards, then this needs to be one degree upwards so the lines that they put out are parallel. Um, if you don't have it like that you're going to get a differential in speed which we will link a video on and it'll give you a hideous drive line vibration noise. The other thing you want to double check is that your drive shaft is in phase. Keep in mind you 80 series owners they're 90 degrees out in the front from factory. So there's three tools that you can use magnetic base angle gauge, digital base angle gauge and if you don't have that you can go to the app store and get a bubble level which is obviously just a digital angle gauge as well you need to calibrate it but it's free so I'll use this it's easier to show you guys however um, the phone is probably going to be what most guys have at home so if I have a brief look at this one it's around 89 degrees which is um, essentially one degree up from 90 and then if we go up to the output shaft angle it's 88.5 now the reason it's fairly well spot on is because these arms are 11 mil longer than factory. They are an aftermarket arm. And if you're not really sure about phasing and it's, you're a little bit flustered by it, a fixed extended length arm is ideal. Um, they do look a little bit low key and factory looking, which can be beneficial for some of you guys. And um, the only downside is you can't give it that fine adjustment. So this is half a degree out, which is next to nothing. However, if they were adjustable I'd probably go half a turn shorter on the rear lowers. Now for you leaf spring guys you can put caster wedges in the back or you can drop your hanger bearing however the diff pinion flange needs to oppose the gearbox output flange not the hanger bearing section so similar principle however you're going to need to use a caster wedge and if you do do that make sure you put the longer through bolt on the leafs that's what locates it on your leaf perches and if you don't it can actually tear the whole diff out I'm sure you've seen a few videos on YouTube of guys off-roading in the rear end coming out of the car. So if this comes down at 5 degrees from 90, this needs to go up at 5 degrees from 90 and we will put a photo up the top right and you can have a quick look at that to get your head around it. So as I said, there is a lot of options. You can get adjustable lowers, adjustable uppers, that's how you adjust them. A lot of guys seem to be pointing the diff at the gearbox, it's not how you do it. You'll end up with that differential in speed which you'll see in that video that we've attached. Any questions, drop a comment below. If you think we're wrong, tell us how you understand it.